Exercising impulse control is a basic idea that becomes very difficult when you just want to send that text or email and say what you really think. Letting your mind make decisions when angry might seem like the easiest option. But in the long run, it is more healthy to build impulse control and learn to curb your anger. You can't always control your emotions, but you can learn to direct your reactions and build positive mental pathways for the future. Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. We offer brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com. Today we are sharing an excerpt from Healing the Angry Brain, How Understanding the Way Your Brain Works Can Help You Control Anger and Aggression, an audiobook written by Dr. Ronald Potter Efron. When anger runs your life, it can also run your brain, developing pathways and habits for your emotions to follow in the future. Take control of this process by understanding the different parts of your brain, the emotions they control, and the ways you can rewire it. You don't have to let your anger be the boss of you. In this episode, Dr. Ronald Potter Efron clarifies the purpose of the prefrontal cortex and details techniques that help train your brain learning impulse control to help you avoid making decisions when you're angry. Avoiding Conscious Bad Choices Why do people make such bad choices when they're angry? In this chapter, I'll endeavor to answer that question. But equally importantly, I'll give you several techniques that can help you make better, less damaging decisions, even when you're extremely upset, allowing you to do a better job of navigating the middle stages of an anger episode, preparation, and action. Decisions, Decisions For the purposes of this chapter and this audiobook, I'll define good choices as those that are fully conscious, driven by the facts, and unbiased. Four key concepts underlie everything you'll learn in this chapter. 1. It is seldom easy to make good choices. 2. It is much harder to make good choices when you're angry. 3. The angrier you are, the more difficult it will be to make good decisions. 4. Habitually angry people habitually make poor choices because of cognitive distortions that warp their view of reality. The previous chapter primarily discussed unconscious brain processes. That's because your initial appraisal of any emotionally significant event is primarily unconscious. Unfortunately, the unconscious alarm system can become overactive and inaccurate. But that doesn't mean all anger problems are caused by unconscious processes. On the contrary, angry people tend to be quite adept at making fully conscious bad decisions that lead to unnecessary trouble. To understand why and how that happens, we must venture into different brain territory. All conscious thinking processes occur in the cerebral cortex, the gray matter that covers the surface of the brain, primarily in the frontal lobe and especially in the prefrontal lobe. The prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is subdivided into several regions. Many of these areas are important when it comes to handling anger well, as mentioned in Chapter 3. For instance, the orbital frontal cortex, located just behind your eyes, helps you understand the rules of your culture, make moral decisions, and apply both in the context of daily living. Meanwhile, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, located toward the top and side of the prefrontal cortex, is essential for executive function, the ability to plan and execute a course of action. In addition, the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, found below the eye region, helps inhibit behavior, which is certainly a critical aspect of anger management. More generally, the middle parts of the prefrontal cortex are involved in the conscious experience of emotions, monitoring one's emotions, and inhibiting excessive emotional reactions and emotion-driven behaviors. The prefrontal cortex helps you be less irritable, have a longer fuse on your temper, feel less unwarranted hostility, 
and be less likely to commit impulsive acts. One of the main tasks of the neurons in the prefrontal cortex is aiding in envisioning a sequence of actions taking place in time. Working memory, a type of memory that allows us to focus upon a task, allows the brain to plan a stepwise process in advance. Any problematic situation that allows for a delay between a stimulus and a response can be processed in the prefrontal cortex, increasing the chances of coming up with an optimal solution. Let's take a look at some of the most important functions of the prefrontal cortex. Developing impulse control. Impulse control is a dry phrase. It doesn't convey how hard it is to stop yourself from lashing out at someone who has just angered you. Quite frankly, it often would feel good if you were to blast that person with nasty words or worse. A well-functioning prefrontal cortex is capable of stopping you before you strike out. It reminds you about the negative long-term consequences. This can take the form of waiting to demonstrate anger in order to receive a bigger payoff later. More often, and more ideally, controlling the impulse to lash out allows the anger to diminish so you can maintain important relationships over time. Planning for the future and anticipating the consequences of actions. One question I often ask clients who are in the midst of anger is, what are you planning to do with your anger? I'm surprised at how often I get only a surprised look in response, as if getting angry were an end in itself. Frankly, it's not very useful to be angry just for the sake of being angry. It's a waste of energy. Fortunately, the prefrontal cortex allows you to convert the raw energy of anger into an action plan. If you make a good plan, you have a decent chance of being able to deal effectively with whatever has upset you. One key is being aware of how others will respond to your actions. You can often use mental rehearsal to help with this. As you consider a possible action, ponder how your partner, your boss, your children, your friends, law enforcement, and society in general will react to your fantasized behavior. If the response would be adverse, you can adjust your plan accordingly. This particular skill involves comprehending the mental and emotional states of others, a key feature of empathy, and a critical skill in anger management. We'll look at empathy in detail in Chapter 8. Extinguishing Negative Patterns Although many things, including habitual anger patterns, can be learned unconsciously, unlearning habits almost invariably requires a conscious process. As mentioned in Chapter 5 on neuroplasticity, real brain change begins when you make and keep a deep commitment to new behavior. Adapting to Changing Circumstances Lack of flexibility is one of the hallmarks of people who suffer chronic anger problems. It's easier for them to repeat a pattern of aggression, even if that usually produces poor results, than to consider alternative actions. Habitually angry people often fail to ask questions like, how is this situation different from similar ones I've encountered in the past? And, what could I do differently this time so I won't get the same bad results? Here, too, the prefrontal cortex, along with the anterior cingulate and the hippocampus, is key. It facilitates adapting to changing conditions and altering behavior when necessary. A well-functioning prefrontal cortex helps angry people come up with new ways to handle old problems. Above all, it allows you to learn from your mistakes so you can try something new the next time an anger-provoking situation arises. In addition, the prefrontal cortex allows you to make and keep a commitment of new behaviors over an extended period of time. This ability to stick it out is essential for promoting brain plasticity. Tuning into others' thoughts and feelings. The prefrontal cortex also plays a critical role in empathy, the ability to put yourself in the mind of others. When you ask yourself what makes another person think the way he or she does, you begin using the prefrontal cortex to understand the differences between the two of you. Empathy is a skill you can cultivate, and Chapter 8 will help you do just that. When you have more empathy, you'll feel less angry when others do things differently than you would. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Healing the Angry Brain. How understanding the way your brain works can help you control anger and aggression. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. 
If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate and review it. And please share it with friends who might also enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.